How you handle yourself in an emergency can make a big difference in the outcome. First, you need to be calm, then you need to be armed with information. So to answer some of your burning health questions today, let's have another double dose of Ask the Doctors with the help of Pfizer's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Frida Lewis-Hall. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Our first question is from Stacy in the audience. So Stacy, what's your question? My husband and I are trying to lead a healthy lifestyle, but I am concerned about the signs of a heart attack, just in case one ever happens to one of us. Can you tell me what to watch for? Absolutely. Each year, 735,000 Americans have a heart attack. You want to know what to look for. Wait a minute, huh? what? How many people? 735,000 Americans. Actual, have actual heart attacks? Have heart attacks. Okay, all right, go ahead. What is um, a heart attack? It's when one of the arteries to the heart is blocked, and that leaves the muscles of the heart starved for oxygen. And that's why you see the symptoms that you do. But men and women can have different symptoms or signs of a heart attack. So how are they different? We think it may be linked to differences in hormones or physiology. So both men and women can experience what we call classic symptoms of a heart attack. That's that squeezing chest pain right. or pressure in your chest, radiation out to the shoulder, up to the neck, down an arm, shortness of breath, sweating, dizziness, nausea, heartburn. Women may experience different symptoms like indigestion like chest pain or gas-like symptoms, uh -huh. pain in their jaw or between their shoulder blades, profound, unexplained, weakness or fatigue, and even more subtle things like recurring chest discomfort. Some women even describe their heart attacks as like the flu. Okay, so what should you do if you suspect a heart attack? You wanna to get to the hospital right away. You wanna dial 911, do not wait, time is of the essence. Okay, so was this helpful? Yes, that, very that's thankful. Good. Yes, that's great information because my family comes from a long uh, history of heart disease. Yeah, how long have you two been married? Better get this one right. 12 wonderful years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Well, I hope this information helps so you can stay healthy together for a long time. I mean, seriously, thanks for your question. Okay, uh, next we have a video from Janelle from Valencia, California. So let's take a look at her question. Hi, doctors. I have very active children in sports who are always getting injured. How do I know the difference between a sprain, a torn ligament, or a broken bone? And when should I take my kids to the doctor versus the emergency room? Well, I think every parent has this concern. So what can you tell us about this? Um, first of all, a sprain is an injury to a ligament, and a strain is an injury to the muscle or a tendon. Now, the symptoms of a strain in a sprain are uh, generally a pain, sometimes swelling, and there can even be bruising around the uh, point of the injury. Now, these things, once they're evaluated properly medically um, by a trained health professional, they can mostly be managed at home. So when should someone go to the ER? So when to go to an ER? A broken bone? is a medical emergency. So how do you know? Well, some kids will actually tell you they heard it snap or felt it snap. They may not be able to move it properly or when they do, there is intense pain. They may also have swelling, bruising, and tenderness to touch the injured area. Yeah. If a child has a head, a neck, or a back injury, that is really a critical thing to take care of. Right. Try not to move them and dial 911 right away. I think a really important thing too for parents is to understand that you are setting a tone. If you'll stay calm, you're gonna make that doctor's job a whole lot easier when you get to the ER, and, right? And to collect information so yeah. that you know, you know, this is what happened, this is what it looked like, these are the symptoms they had. So thanks for your question, Janelle. All right, next we have an email from Bethany in Mount Carmel, Illinois. She writes, hi doctors, I was cleaning out my medicine cabinet and found some bottles that are expired by just a month. Is it okay to still use them? If not, what's the best way to get rid of expired meds? Uh, thank you, Bethany. So what's the story on this? Because do these things expire? Oh, absolutely. It's really important to um, clean your medicine cabinet out to make sure that you avoid any mistakes, any mishaps, any misuses, or worse yet, abuses <clears throat> of medications. So 
now you've got all this prescription medicine and um, it has an expiration date that's now passed. Can you still use it? It's advised not to take expired medications. Manufacturers, by law, put the last day that they can guarantee the full potency of a medicine when it's stored under proper conditions. Be mindful of if you're managing a serious chronic illness or a life-threatening illness. Stay out in front of those expiration dates um, if your medication is prescribed for those things. So what do you do with this ex expired meds? Yeah, that's a great question. First of all, many people don't know, but there are take-back programs that exist in many communities. They'll take the medication back and dispose it properly. Now, the FDA website has uh, just great information on this. In addition, there are some medicines that you should pour down the drain or flush down the toilet. Those things are also listed on this, this hmm. site. So, thank you for your question, Bethany. If someone wants even more information, they should check out your website, right? They should check out GetHealthyStayHealthy.com. They can also sign up for the Get Healthy, Stay Healthy newsletter while we're there. And also, there are links to the websites that we just mentioned to right. make it easy. I want to thank all of my guests today, especially Dr. Frieda Lewis-Hall.